Jay Baba. This is the second session in our 16 session series uh, of close reading and studying Francis Brabazon's epic masterpiece, Stay With God. The formal title of this entire series is Stay With God, Francis Brabazon's epic masterpiece as a proclamation of Meher Baba's avatarhood and foundation laying for the new world civilization. Uh, the previous video sessions include, first of all, a very short introduction to the entire series. And then there are two short videos that comprise sessions 1A and 1B. Uh, the first of those giving a perspective and overview of certain dimensions and questions related to Stay With God, and the second focusing on Francis Brabazon's life story. Uh, the last part of that included a uh, review of the four-year period between Baba's telling Francis to write Stay With God and his presenting of it to Baba, Baba's response, and the publication of the book in 1959. This second session is now turning to the topic of uh, certain formal characteristics of the book as a whole, um, and then more specifically, the elements in the front matter of a book. Books are typically said to have a front matter, the main text, and back matter. Uh, the front matter would be those elements before the book proper begins. And in Stay With God, Francis has given close and deep thought uh, to all of these things, and all of it is worth looking at. In brief overview, then, these are the principal elements in the book. On Starting on this slide, uh, it begins with a dedicatory, uh, which we'll be looking at more closely later. It's a poem, it's a sonnet. That's followed by, on this slide you can see, a preface by Francis, uh, which then yields to a foundation. Now, in most books, the preface uh, would precede the introduction, but in this case, he's called it a foundation. Uh, for reasons we'll be looking at later. And then the last element in this front matter is a message from Baba himself. And Baba gave three messages specifically for inclusion in Stay With God. Baba liked the poem so much, but he actually made, uh, uh, dictated three messages to be worked in, as we'll be looking at in due course. That's the front matter. Here is the table of contents, uh, which shows you the five books. You know, in traditional um, uh, English history, uh, works were often divided into books. We think now of a book as a total work, but a book can be a sub section of a larger work, and that's what Francis has done here with these five books. We'll be looking at this more closely in due course. Um, between book two and book three has been included the second of the messages which Baba dictated specifically for Stay With God, something that is to be found nowhere else. Then there are notes, and Baba actually wanted Francis to incorporate this. After Francis had presented the poem to Baba, Baba wanted this section for reasons that are easy to understand when you read Stay With God. It's full, full of allusions to masters and artists and cu major cultural figures from all over the world. And uh, very few people will have the background to, to pick up on all of these, so the notes are helpful. As I said, we're also going to include among the materials available for this uh, study program a glossary that will give a much fuller and more comprehensive account 
of all these references in Stay With God. It's one of the most noticeable features of Stay With God, the references all over the place. And the very last element, dreaming and dreaming, is the third of the messages given by Meher Baba himself for inclusion in Stay With God, and it's the very last element in the book. Uh, while Francis was working on the notes, uh, Baba did give him this message, uh, which I would like to read. Um, Francis had apparently communicated that he wanted to complete a study of the world's great scriptures uh, before finishing the notes. And when you read Stay With God, you can understand why that would be. There actually are not many references to scripture as such. There are references to all kinds of perfect masters and artists and uh, other figures, but not all that much to, uh, say, the Gita or the Bible or the Koran, a little bit, but not too much. But uh, when Baba heard this from Francis, uh, this was what he communicated. I'd like to read this out. It's quite a striking message about the scriptures. You know scripture, right? Holy, the holy books of the great world religions. Baba said, the scriptures are like rotten bones rotted and are as food for worms. <laughs> Theosophy and philosophy are like good bones rotted and are as food for vultures. The writings of inspired poets are like fresh bones and are as food for dogs. The writings of spiritually advanced saints are like flesh and are as food for tigers. The writings by living perfect masters are like brain and are as food for men. <laughs> it's very striking. Fr this is the sort of thing that Baba would say to Francis, to whom he could speak very frankly. The idea of eating brain would be kind of shocking for most people, but Baba's speaking in kind of a symbolic language here. <laughs> Good bones, when rotted, have some semblance of bone, but rotten bones, when rotted, are like filth. He said in the first line, they're food for worms. So, you may go through the scriptures superficially only to drive away the barking dogs when necessary. For instance, when you are called upon to answer the queries of the priests and the orthodox. Put all your heart into the notes of Stay With God, which will turn out to be ever fresh brain. That was the highest category that Baba gave. So it's, high, it's actually high praise to stay with God. So Baba really wanted Francis to put himself into the notes. And just to reiterate what I've said before, in all these references w with which stay with God is replete, there is a tremendous charge. And if you put an effort into understanding uh, what Francis is referring to, it repays the effort very much. <laughs> So there's a little example of some of what the input Baba <laughs> was giving into Stay With God. As I mentioned last time, Baba had a lot of things for Francis to incorporate or uh, little changes to make or little additions um, uh, to put in. Baba was, his involvement was very much a hands-on kind of affair. Uh, he didn't just have Francis read it and say, oh, nice Francis. No, it was much more than that. Okay, um, here's a little bit of a view of some of the formal characteristics of the organization of Stay With God. Once again, looking at this table of contents, which I keep coming back to because it's uh, a very significant part of it. I'd like to look at um, some of the formal organization uh, of the poem around these five books. And I've created this table. Um, <clears throat> this is just, this is to show you the kind of attention which Francis gave to things like the number of lines in a stanza, 
uh, the number of stanzas in a section, all of this. There's great attention to numbers, and it's worth being aware of that. So I did, I counted up all of this, and I was very, very struck. For as to what a stanza is, here, let me just read a stanza. I'll read a stanza from, uh, here's from the uh, fourth book. Here the stanzas are five lines long. So you can see a stanza there, right? It's that little chunk of five lines. I'll read one. So must be prepared the ground for the sowing, for the entering of the seed of light in one's earth. The seed of man is the gathered light of form. The seed of light is the grace of the perfect master. So that's a stanza. It's a standard concept in not just Western poetry, but poetry all over the world. The formal poetry is very typically organized into formal divisions like this. So uh, Francis had a whole plan for this, which you can see um, in this slide. <coughs> um, so you see on the left-hand column five books, one, two, three, four, five, right? And uh, in each of them, he had stanzas of different lengths. The first uh, uh, book, the stanzas are seven lines long. The second book, six. The third, ten. The fourth, five. And the fifth, 14. So let me dwell on this a little bit because I feel it's meaningful. Um, as I went over last time and we'll be looking at closely, um, the first book is biographical. You know what biography is, right? It's the story of Meher Baba's life from his birth through 1955. Um, and for this purpose, Francis has picked seven line stanzas. You know, the number seven is a very meaningful number in Meher Baba's cosmology. There are seven avatars that Baba kept talking about. There are seven planes of consciousness. So in reviewing Baba's life, that number seems appropriate. Uh, by the way, let me also say this. Um, in much of Western poetry and world poetry, uh, the, the, a uh, epic will have a formal meter that is a kind of rhythm. Dun, da, da, 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 dun, da. That's the dactylic hexometer. Well, Francis's poetry doesn't here have a formal meter. That element is missing uh, from it. Uh, the standard meter in English language poetry was iambic pentameter, and it really wouldn't serve the needs of an epic like this. Okay, so the first uh, one has seven. The second uh, book there is a love song, and um, it has six lines. And this is what I think about that. This is not Baba's voice. This is John Carey's voice, which is the name Francis uses for himself. And it's the lover singing for the beloved. And it occurs to me that the number six in this context is an incomplete number because it wants to achieve the seventh, which is the beloved. It's like the sixth is the plane of the agony of the lover, and the seventh is the plane which the beloved inhabits. So as a love song, it strikes me that that might be the reason why Francis made his stanzas six lines long. The third book is uh, God Speaking. It has that title. And it's a review of the divine theme. That is the main subject matter of God Speaks, which was published in 1955, as I said last time. And Francis probably got his copy at the November 55 Sahabas, where Baba gave him the order to write this book, Stay With God. Um, and uh, so God Speaks has, as what I feel is its culminating chapter, I think it's the most important chapter, One, certainly an important chapter, uh, the chapter called The Ten States of God, right? So notice that these stanzas are ten lines long. It's also a very suitable unit for what Francis, the rhythm he wants to talk in. By the way, the length of a stanza has a lot to do with the rhythm of the poetry, the chunking. So this is a longer chunk, a ten-line stanza. Um, and uh, <coughs> the fourth one, I read a stanza from that earlier, 
is about how to find his feet, what you have to do if you want to get to the feet of the perfect master. Every stanza ends with the phrase, the perfect master. All of them do. And um, uh, how many perfect masters are there? Five. So his stanzas are five lines long. And the last section, which is very long section, more than half the book, um, goes into the longest stanza of all, 14 line stanzas. And uh, that's two times seven, right? The first one was seven, now we're up to 14. And uh, also the number 14 is very um, significant in Western poetry because that's the length of a sonnet. And the sonnet form is something that Francis uses a lot here. We'll look at it more closely in a minute. It has 14 lines. Also, it was after he finished Stay With God, but when he was living with Baba, Francis started to write English language guzzles. Guzzles are an old form in the Middle East, in Persia and Urdu, um, but they hadn't been written in English, and Francis began doing so, and his guzzles all have 14 lines. So you see the length of the stanzas is really very appropriate and significant, 7, 6, 10, 5, and 14. Now, the book, as you can see in the second to the left column, uh, each book is divided into various numbers of sections. So the book one, the biography, is, which has stanzas of seven lines, is divided into seven sections. And these are formal divisions. This isn't just my interpreting it. It's marked by a, bro a line that breaks them into different sections. Um, and within these sections, we have various numbers um, of uh, stanzas. So the first section, you know, a stanza, like the seven line stanza is characteristic of the uh, uh, first book. So the first section, look at these numbers. I'm just drawing attention to the fact that the numbers are really thought out and meaningful. So the first section, which declares the subject matter, has seven. The second, which begins Baba's life, has 14, two times seven, right? The third section, very long, which covers the, all the rest of the old life up until 1949, has 101. Well, that's a, a very famous number, 101 names of God in Zoroastrianism. I mean, 101 is, it's not, it surely is not a coincidence that he had that. The next two sections on the new life and the uh, free lives are 16 and 16. And then the sixth section is 24. If you go take a look at book two, you will see that that also has 24 stanzas. And the last section, which is a coda, I'll say in a moment what a coda is, has five. At the end of book five, if you look down there, you'll see there too, the coda has five stanzas. Um, it would take much longer than I want to give to it, but these numbers give a kind of a symmetry and a balance. Now, most people reading it would not be thinking about these things, but you feel it. You feel the rhythm of it. So it is intricately thought out as you can see, the number of stanzas, the number of lines in the stanza, the number of sections, all of this is intricately structured. Let me give you just one famous example from Western literature, uh, which Francis knew very well. The great medieval poet Dante, uh, who is widely regarded as the greatest medieval poet of, uh, of Europe, and one of the five or six greatest poets of the Western world, his great uh, greatest work is called The Divine Comedy, which is a journey through hell, purgatory, and heaven. And it is divided into 100 cantos. The first has an introduction and then 33, the second 33, and the third 33. So Francis was tapping into a tradition which very often would pay great attention to formal organization. The great one of the supreme musicians, Bach, 
would count the number of measures in his composition and organize it around the principle of the golden mean. You know, you, when you're listening to it, you wouldn't know this, but you feel it. So Francis was drawing on um, a long history of art that uses these things. Okay, the second book then um, has just one section. It's a love song, it's much shorter. And you see it has 24 stanzas, each of which has six lines. By the way, in um, book one, the sixth section had 24 stanzas, right? Well, that section of the book one was about the 1955 Sahabas, which Francis attended. And in fact, it introduces Francis under the name John Kerry. And book two is the love song of John Kerry. Both of those have 24 stanzas. You see how much this has been thought out? Okay, the third book is the one telling the divine theme narrative, the journey of the soul narrative from God Speaks. Um, and this one has divided into four sections plus a coda. Um, and each section has 10 stanzas. As I mentioned earlier, this surely recalls the chapter, The Ten States of God. So there are a total of Four, as I said last time, and we'll go into much more detail when we get to it, the form here is a musical form called theme and variation, uh, where you have a certain theme and you repeat it with variations each time. That's the, it's a very famous musical form in Western classical music, which Francis used here. And the coda does a fifth repetition in one single stanza. And let me say what a coda is. This, again, is a musical term. As those of you will recall who saw the earlier session on Francis's life, um, he was thinking for a certain period of time of becoming a musician, and he studied piano. So he uh, was very fully acquainted with music, Western classical music especially. And in Western in classical music, this is what a coda is. You complete a movement of a composition, and then the coda is the conclusion which repeats the central theme of the movement um, in a very finalizing form. Uh, if the movement was seven minutes long, the coda might be 30 seconds, let's say. The greatest musicians like Bach and Mozart and Beethoven would all use this. So Francis has used this in book one. The seventh section there is, in fact, a coda. He doesn't call it that, but it is. Um, the uh, third book concludes with the coda, and as you can see in book five, that also concludes with a coda. Okay, coming to book four, here we have uh, uh, five line stanzas because the dominant theme is the perfect master of whom there are five. Every stanza ends with the words the perfect master. And here you have uh, 40 stanzas plus one. Well, the number 40 is another famous number in spirituality. Uh, uh, when you do the get in a circle and do that austerity uh, to realize God, you do it for 40 days. The number 40 comes up all over the place. So this, uh, and the stanzas are short, so it's not that long a section. So here too, we have a very significant number. And the number 40 is relevant to book five. There we have four formal parts. Each part <coughs> um, has uh, 40 stanzas in it. And the stanzas are very long, they're 14 lines. Um, so, uh, and it begins with an initial stanza and concludes, which a preamble, and concludes with the coda of five stanzas. Uh, and these are in fact numbered. Uh, when you read through it, you'll see the numbers of the stanzas. So this is a glimpse. I'm just showing you the overall formal architecture 
I'll stay with God. And keep it in mind, it's um, very deeply thought out and has, it's like if those of you who might know, say the Parthenon, that great Greek temple which got blasted by the Turks in the 16th century, but you see uh, reconstructions of it, the perfection of it, or the Taj Mahal would be another example, the absolute perfection of every little element in it, you know? Well, this poem as a whole has that. You might not know it in reading it, but I do feel that you feel it. The, the, the symmetry in the, or the classical organization of the whole thing. So to recapitulate on the form of the whole, here's another table which shows some of that same information in another form. You can see on the left-hand column books one, two, three, and the next page will be four and five. And book one has seven sections, book two, one, book three has four sections with a coda, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you, the tally of the lines is shown in the right-hand column. In fact, let's go to the very bottom. This is just to show you the proportions in each of these books. Book one, with its seven sections of a uh, variable number of stanzas, has 1,281 lines. Book two, the love song, is much shorter, only 146. Book three, uh, the God Speaks session, has 410. Book four, Steps to His Feet, is 205. And book five is 2,324. So you can see that book five is more than half the book. Um, and the whole thing is 4,566 lines. Um, something like the Iliad or the Odyssey, you know, I'm forgetting, might be about 10,000 lines. Um, the Mahabharata is about 100,000 lines. Shakespeare's longest play, Hamlet, is maybe 4,000 lines. To give you an idea, this is a you know, substantial, major, uh, poetic uh, work. Okay, and so... The last thing I'm gonna do in this first session so that we get some poetry in is to take a look at Francis's use of the sonnet form. Um, here we have in this slide the dedicatory, the very first element in the entire uh, Stay With God is in fact a formal sonnet. And I would like to read a famous sonnet from English literature uh, just to illustrate what the form is. Uh, here's one by Shakespeare, um, who's one of the great writers of sonnets. I'm not going to use his, though, because uh, Francis uses not the Shakespearean sonnet form, but what's called the Italian sonnet form. And this poem by the great poet John Milton uh, is in the Italian sonnet form. John Milton was blind. Uh, so he's writing about that. And if you just look at it by the divisions marked, the indentations on the left, you can see there's four, uh, four lines in the first section, then four lines, and then three lines, and then three lines. The Italian sonnet is said to have an octave, that is eight lines, four plus four, and then a sestet, three plus three. And the rhyming scheme... Let's just look at the rhyme words. Spent, wide, hide, bent, present, chide, denied, prevent. So that rhyme scheme is A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, right? And then the, the sestet has a different rhyming scheme, and there's variability in this. But here it's need, best, state, speed, rest, wait. Thus, C-D-E, C-D-E. So that's the Italian sonnet. And the poetic meter here, that's the formal rhythmic structure of the lines, is the most famous one in English and in European poetry called iambic pentameter. It has five feet with two syllables in each. Thus, the rhythm is da-da, 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 right? And sometimes a last syllable, da, 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 sometimes. So I'm going to read this so you can get a sense of what one of the great uh, 
sonnets in this form is. It's one of the most famous in English. It's originated in Italy. When I consider how my light is spent, ere half my days in this dark world and wide, and that one talent, which is death to hide, lodged with me useless. He's talking about his blindness. He can't, you know, he can't see. He's a writer and he can't see. Though my soul, more bent to serve therewith my maker and present my true account, lest he returning chide doth God exact, uh, chide, doth God exact day labor, light denied, I fondly ask. But patience, to prevent that murmur, soon replies, God doth not need either man's work or his own gifts. Who best bear his mild yoke, they serve him best. His state is kingly. Thousands at his bidding speed and post our land and ocean without rest. They also serve who only stand and wait. Okay, so that's a sonnet. And Francis uh, wrote many formal sonnets in preparation for writing Stay With God. So Stay With God opens with a sonnet in this very form, which I'm going to read out. And also Stay With God closes with another Italian sonnet. So this is the first element in the whole thing, dedicatory. So I'll read it out. You'll see um, this is A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A. It uses then C, D, E, E, D, C. That is story, tell, labor, savor, well, glory. That's a variation often used in the Italian sonnet. And it's an iambic pentameter. By the way, um, in the seventh line, you'll see the word forsaken. In the course of doing the editorial research for the new edition of this, I found that that's a mistake. It should be forsook, and it's a rhyme word, so I'm going to read it that way. To Meher Baba, my lord and friend, lord and friend of the worlds, here is the book on the theme you set me, and which I took into my heart and pondered to the end, that your dear name be known to men and send perhaps one to your feet. Look indulgently on it, or else forsook am I. Yet, Lord, correct my wit and mend my heart in love, for love is my story. And in this book have I labored to tell something of your most marvelous labor. When of myself I wrote, not of your savor was in it, but when I wrote of love, I wrote well, even showing forth some fraction of your glory. So this sonnet is a statement of dedication of the work to uh, Meher Baba. This was conventional in Western poetry where you would have a dedication to your patron. In this case, it's to his lord and master. And you notice he says, here is the book on the theme you set me. Well, Baba in the 1955 Sahavas told him to write a poem named Stay With God. So he's saying, I'm fulfilling your order in doing this. You as my master. And I would like to look at the last stanza of the entire poem. And this will be our concluding um, thing here. Uh, this is at the end of book five. You can see up in the top left here, there is a coda, right? I mentioned what a coda is, a musical form. And here is the very final stanza. The uh, book five, the stanzas are 14 lines long, the length of a sonnet. So he closes with a formal Italian sonnet, which as you'll see, very much echoes the dedication. So I'll read that. So have I writ what love told me to write. Just to mention, love told him to write it, right? Baba said, write, stay with God. So have I writ what love told me to write. And every line betrays my poverty of love 
as a poor man asked his charity, displays a single shilling to our sight. Yet I'm somewhat contented of my plight in that rich love stooped down to ask of me, thus honoring me in whom no others see worth, myself the least. Thus does love with light and gentle grace encourage on his way the least of us, taking each by the hand he's labored with, using the same labor to raise him to still greater favor, even perhaps to love's own path, to stand in light when silence speaks its shining day. Quite a magnificent closing to the whole thing. So you see the rhyme scheme, right, poverty, charity, sight, plight, me, see, light. That is A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A. And then way, hand, labor, favor, stand, day. C, D, E, E, D, C. Um, and this mirrors and completes the opening. He's sort of saying, um, I've done what you told me to do, even though I'm have utter, I'm utterly unworthy, but your mercy is such that you lift up the least of us and use the work that we do for you to bring us closer to you. He's talking about this work that he's done in writing this poem and thanking Baba for it. Even perhaps to love's own path, to stand in light when silence speaks its shining day. This is a metaphor that is, First of all, silence doesn't speak, right? So there's a paradox right in there. But if you were to say, what does silence speak? It speaks a word, right? And that's been a big theme in Stay With God, Baba's Word. But he metaphorically transforms it into a light imagery, the day which would be the day of ultimately God realization. When silence really speaks in our heart, we will realize God is infinite light. So that'll be it for this first session. I've been trying to illustrate some of the formal characteristics and here showing his use of the sonnet form. Uh, as we go through Stay With God, I hope we'll notice his use of many of these formal elements as a mechanism for rhythm, for thematic resonance, and for poetic power. Okay, Jay Baba.